Hello, welcome to Butterfly Spanish. Me llamo Ana, and in today's lesson, we're going to learn uh, some vocabulary in Spanish. And this is the first class of a series of vocabulary lessons. So I'm going to start with one, and I'm going to keep going until I get to the 1500. So you have all the vocabulary you need to speak as a native speaker does. Uh, if you watch my lessons on vocabulary, you will really pick up some cool, important Spanish words. And just remember, one of the best guns to fight a language is to have vocabulary. Without vocabulary, you're nothing. You cannot say I speak Spanish if you don't say, oh, how do you say, uh, uh, how do you say? No, you always have to know the word. Knowing the word is so important that at the end, another person can tell you how to say it. But if you have more vocabulary than, natives, than a native speaker does, then you're my hero or hero woman. Okay, let's start. My vocabulary lesson today is about my favorite thing. Animals. <laughs> animals. But any type of animal, although I love all animals, I decided to start with domestic animals. And very important, with some of the animals, some people eat. We eat. I eat some of them, some pieces of them. Okay, let's start. So my lesson today is about animals. Very good. First, I'm going to introduce you to some animals. Then I'm going to introduce you to some of their noises, the noises they make. And third, I'm going to teach you some important verbs that are used to talk about those animals, like what are the actions, the verbs they perform. And then I'm going to give you some examples with me and the horse and me and walking the dog. So let's start. First, we're gonna go through my list of animals. So maybe you can repeat after me. So this is uh, fun and you can not only pick up vocabulary, but practice your pronunciation. Excellent. Excelentemente bien. Vamos a empezar. First animal, perro, perro. Now you have a double R, right? The double R. The rolling R. A lot of people say, "Oh, I cannot pronounce that like that that um, letter. It's so difficult." Now listen to me, Petro. Listen to me again, Petro. Do you notice something? I cannot pronounce that letter. I can't, and I am a native speaker. Uh, Yes, I was born in Mexico. I grew up in a small town. That's what I, I like animals because I, I took care of my cows and my lambs and some once in a while I eat some of them. Um, but I cannot pronounce that letter. So if you can't, don't worry because some native speakers like me cannot either. And the problem is my tongue is actually attached. There's a problem with my tongue. So that's what I cannot pronounce that. Petro. I sound French. Perro. Petro, but maybe you can. So try to roll your R, and if you can't, then say, well, whatever. My Spanish teacher cannot pronounce the double R, so can't I. <laughs> Great, now we're friends. Somos amigos. Petro. Petro. Fradot es un perro. Tin, 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 tin. Fradot es un perro. Gato. Cat, cat, gato. Oh, Frodo doesn't like cats because he's a perro. Okay, cats and dogs, perros y gatos, sometimes they don't get along. Los perros y los gatos no se llevan bien. No se llevan bien a veces. Ratón, yeah. rat. Uh, rata, rat is rata, and ratón is mouse. Ratón is a little tricky friend that sometimes lives 
around. And Rata is a big, uh, disturbing animal. Still an animal. Raton. Gallina. 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 And his, her boyfriend, Gallo. Gallina is hen. Gallo is rooster. Ha! Guajolote. Guajolote. That's what we say in, in Mexico. Guajolote. Fancy name? Pavo. That's what we eat. We're going to go to the things we eat afterwards. So, guajolote. In English, what is a guajolote? Turkey. Sounds fancy. Turkey. We say guajolote. When I was a little girl, I used to go and like have a lot of fun doing this. Because after you do this, when you're in front of the turkeys, in front of the guajolotes, you do this. And they go, <laughs> and I spent many hours doing that. Um, yeah, well, that's just a personal thing. That's not, you don't have to learn that. Um, next is vaca, cow, vaca. Vaca, cow. <laughs> what am I going to do with so many animals here? Toro. Ah, that's the boyfriend. The bull. Toro. I don't have a toro. It's hard to get a toro. Toro. Bull. Borrego. Borrego. Again, my double R. Sorry, I can't. Sorry. Borrego. Lamp. Okay, lamp with the curly hair. Not the white with the curly hair. Lamb, borrego. Or if it's a female, borrega. With an A, borrega. Pig, marrano, marrano. Marrano, pig. Now the friend of the lamb, chivo, goat, chivo. I do have a goat. Hey, where's my goat? Me, me, chivo, go, chivo, excellent. Oh, caballo, caballo, caballo. Hey, listen to this. Horse is caballo, caballo. Now, I just went out to get some beef and pig and lamb tacos. I'm quite full right now. And... I was out with my friend and, and then I heard, can I have a quesadilla? Now you cannot say quesadilla, right? Because you would say quesadilla, right? Because it's a caballo, right? So you have to pronounce this one because it's not an I. It's not caballo. It's caballo. Great. Now, conejo. Rabbit. Conejo. Oh, I like conejos. I don't have a conejo. Hey, speaking of pig, I do have a pig. Marrano. Un marrano. <laughs> it's a pink marrano. <laughs> rosa, un marrano rosa. And this is un burro. Burro, un caballo. Maybe un caballo. Burro o caballo. Burro is donkey, caballo is horse. Excellent. So we have all the animals here. I love animals. Me encantan los animales. Now, we're going to go to the second part. So now you know how it's like, okay, pig, marrano, is that all you're going to teach us today? Butterfly, you're getting so boring now. Okay, no. Well, the reason I'm teaching you this is because it's very important. If you go on vacation, now you can recognize the animals. But also, because you can recognize, you can have improve your vocabulary. For example, a dog barks, right? Un perro ladra. That's the verb. Barks, ladra, ladrar. Uh, el gato maulla. Meow, meow. Maulla. I don't have a cat. Maulla. La gallina cacarea, cacarea, cacarea. 
la gallina. El gallo. I don't know what the gallo does, but I why what I remember when I was uh, young is that we I used to have a rooster, un gallo, and every morning it'll wake me up at six in the morning, like oh, every day, like they never, uh, they never sleep sleep in. They wake up at the same time every day. Believe me, I, I had one. What you would say is, the gallo hace kikiriki, kikiriki. That's like the, the noise they make, because I don't really know what the noise, name for the noise is. La vaca, la vaca, brama, brama. La vaca, brama, bramar. Es el verbo. El borrego bala. Now, that's kind of the proper way of saying it. Really, what native speaker would say is like, oh, el borrego hace me. You know, they would just like imitate uh, the, the noise and say with the verb hace. ¿Qué ruido hace la vaca? What noise does the vaca make? ¿Qué ruido? Hace la vaca. Oh, la vaca hace something like that, right? Like calling them something like that. So that would be like the, the verb that they use to say this animal makes this noise. El borrego hace like you imitate it. You're not gonna keep making fun of my noises. Now we go to oh the caballo. Yeah, el caballo relincha. When, when, when the caballo makes the noise, something like that, that's relincha. El caballo relincha. Uh, and now we're going to make um, the caballo relincha, but also when the caballo, like, you know, the caballo goes like, uh, they say galopa, galopa, el, el caballo galopa. So relincha is the noise. And galopa is kind of like the, the trot, the, this, uh, so relincha is the snorting, and galopar is how they go, I don't know the verb in English, but when they walk, like, not walk, but like very elegantly they go. Um, excellent. Uh, the rabbit, I don't know, rabbit don't make noises, right? Uh, and they jump, right? Like, they jump when they go somewhere. Excellent. So now you have a list of animals that you're going to memorize to improve your vocabulary and some of the verbs that are used to describe those animals such as ladrar, the dog, el perro, maullar, the cat, el gato, uh, relinchar, the horse, el caballo, uh, what else? Um, I think those are all the ones we've seen and the others that you say, hace, and then you imitate the noise. The rooster makes like, and you make the noise, hace, and they make the noise. Excellent. So now we're going to go through, some of these animals are part of our diet, right? <laughs> and some of them are really delicious. Now for those who are vegetarian, I respect the fact that you're vegetarian. I, I, sometimes I am too, but then I go back. Um, and just now I had some tacos, very good tacos and quesadillas. And I had perro quesadilla. No, no, I didn't have perro quesadilla. Of course I didn't. I love dogs. I had quesadilla de pollo, chicken. So I don't say I had a taco de gallina. No, I said I had a taco de pollo. That's how it, the meat is called. Pollo. So you eat pollo, but the animal is la gallina. Okay? Muy bien. Now, something fancy. So, I like guajolotes. As I told you, I used to like spend many hours with the guajolotes in my house. How do we call the meat for the guajolote? Turkey, in Spanish, pavo. Very fancy, pavo. So the animal is the guajolote. The cooked animal is the pavo. In Christmas, for example, you probably have pavo. Uh, 
Sometimes I do, but for me it's too bland, so I have to put lots of hot sauce. Babo. Ha, huh. baka. So baka, very nice. It gives us milk, cheese, cream. Very good. What's the name of the meat? Carne. But carne is like meat. So we say carne de res. It's like carne de this animal, vaca. That's what we eat, carne de res. Of course, for each of the parts you like from the animal has different names, as it does in English. Well, let's go, next one. Oh, lamb. Now I'm gonna put it here at mark, because this is called the meat, the meat for eating is called barbacoa. Tacos de barbacoa. Barbacoa is the goats or lambs, beef that is kind of shredded and you eat some tacos, very delicious tacos. The meat is called barbacoa. My mama, mi mama says that goat is tastier than lamb but I haven't been able to notice that difference. I just eat whatever they put on the table and, and I enjoy it, but she says somehow goat is tastier than lamb, maybe. Maybe you tell me next time if it's true. Now, caballo. I don't eat caballo, I really don't. Maybe you do, I don't know. I don't know what the meat is called. I guess carne de caballo. Carne de res, de vaca. Carne de caballo could be conejo. Now, when you eat conejo, not a lot of people eat conejo, right? But when you eat conejo, you just say eat conejo, comí conejo. I guess it's still quite wild, so we haven't developed a term for the actual meat. Uh, maybe carne de conejo. Uh, oh, something funny I remember. So, you know, in English, they call it um, guinea, guinea pigs. Well, the guinea pig is a, an animal, right? But it's it's used like the phrase guinea pig is used to um, to describe that someone is being uh, like someone is using that person to do experiments or trials, right? So it's like a guinea pig. Hmm. In Spanish, we say conejillo de Indias. I'm going to write it down. Conejillo. So conejillo is like conejo, but it's like a diminutive to make it kind of cute and like conejillo, like not very important, like a derogatory. The Indias. Oh, sorry about my letter. It's just in the color. It might be conejillo de Indias. That's what we call the guinea pig. I am conejillo de Indias. You are conejillo de Indias. I don't know. Like, that's, that's why you use, we use the rabbit instead of the pig part. Now let's go to some examples. Excellent, so let's go to some examples. So for example, I can say, Ana monta el caballo. Ana rides the horse. So monta is to ride. I'm gonna go to the caballo. Que galopa, el caballo galopa, remember? And what the noise the caballo makes? Relincha, that's the noise, relincha. And now here, Ana lleva a su perro a pasear. I go with my perro Frodo. A pasear. I'm going to take Frodo for a walk. Llevo a mi perro a pasear. To take the dog for a walk. Llevar al perro a pasear. Now, how do we, what do we say when we feed the animals? But of course, like I've been saying, oh yeah, the animals are delicious, I enjoy them so much, and they are also cute. And unfortunately, some people are vegetarian, some people are not. I go in periods of vegetarian and not vegetarian, but at the end, we have to feed them in order to keep our life going. So when I feed the animals, how do we say? Dar de comer, that's the infinitive way. Remember the infinitive? I have it in other lessons. Go and watch it about the infinitive verbs. Dar de comer al caballo. Ana le da de comer al caballo. Which is, Ana feeds the horse. Here is like, Ana le da de comer al perro. Ana 
le da de comer al perro. Anna feeds the dog. Sometimes Frodo is hungry, I have to feed the dog, right? Well, I think I finished my lesson. I don't think I for I'm forgetting anything. Uh, thank you so much for watching my lesson. Keep watching my vocabulary series. Next time I'm gonna have about wild animals and I'm going to get the animal part and then we're gonna go through all sorts of vocabulary things. And if you have a suggestion or you need a lesson about something specific, please let me know. Uh, remember that, uh, remember to subscribe to my channel, Butterfly Spanish, and say hi, Frodo. And also, if you would like me to record uh, more lessons, you can donate to my channel. As I said, I would like to keep posting lessons and keep teaching you Spanish. I just have to be able to focus on this. And with that, we're all gonna be happy. So donate to my channel, subscribe to my channel, and I'm happy to see you. Gusto de verte. Gusto de verte. Happy to see you. Bye. Bye, Frodo. Adios, animales.